Hey everyone, we're here in Orlando at Animal Kingdom. Come with me and see how you can navigate an amusement park. Before visiting the parks, you can visit their websites and learn more about their accessibility services prior to your visit. You can also contact guest services up to 30 days in advance of your visit to the park and speak with guest services to determine if you are eligible for the DAS Pass at Disney or the AAP at Universal. Disney's DAS Pass is digital via the My Disney Experience app so you can Google Registering for Disability Access Service. Here you can set up a virtual chat with guest relations and pre-register for the pass. For Universal, you will call guest relations at 407-224-4233. And if you are eligible, they will provide a reference number that you will give to guest relations in person at the park who will then provide you with the paper pass. For both parks, you'll need to give them as many details as possible about you or your family member's disability or health problems and limitations that might make standing in a line difficult, such as sensitivity to loud noises or other stimulations, severe anxiety, claustrophobia, physical limitations, etc. Since Animal Kingdom was built after 1998 and is fully ADA compliant, having the ability to accommodate wheelchairs and ECVs, they might not accommodate you with a disability pass for mobility issues. However, Magic Kingdom and Epcot are older and not all attractions are accessible to wheelchairs and ECVs. You're not legally required to give a doctor's note but it can help if you're comfortable providing it. The day of arrival, you will want to make your first stop at Guest Relations to receive all the information you might need and or your accessibility passes. If you have any other medical needs, Guest Relations can also provide you the location of the park's first aid station, the wheelchair ECV rentals, service animal, and other disability services available. If you have anyone that needs to have any medical devices or medical items held, like extra oxygen tank equipment or certain medicines or insulin that need to be refrigerated, these services are available at the first aid station within the park. All right, so more about the passes, how they work. Disney's DAS service is basically giving you a virtual line equivalent to the standby. So if the wait time for an attraction is 100 minutes, you will schedule a return time on your app for in 100 minutes. If it's less than 30 minutes, you'll be able to go through the lightning lane. DAS doesn't provide immediate access to experiences, but allows you and up to seven or eight guests to request a return time for a specific experience that is comparable to the current standby wait. Having the pass on the app is great. Instead of having to physically go to an experience or to a kiosk to obtain a return time from a cast member, you can now make return time for you and your guests right from the My Disney Experience app during the day of a park visit. Any member of your party can obtain a return time for the whole party, but the person with the pass must be present when using the pass. You can only have one active return time at a time. If you are having difficulties navigating the app, you can also visit Guest Relations or speak with a member of the Guest Experience team to help you. Ask Guest Relations where the Guest Experience umbrellas are located throughout the park. Also on the app, you can purchase Genie Passes. You can either purchase for all experiences or you can purchase individual passes for a particular attraction. The newer, most popular attractions do not offer the Genie Pass, but will accept the DAS Pass. At Universal, the AAP is a paper card with a barcode and will have the date it is valid, the guest's name and the party size, and lines on the back for return times to the attractions. 
The pass allows the party member with disabilities and up to nine others in their group to wait in the Universal Express line if the attraction is less than 30 minutes wait. If the attraction is a wait time longer than 30 minutes, the attraction worker will write down a return time of whatever the wait time is. So, if you arrive at the attraction at noon and the wait time is 60 minutes, they will give you a return time for you and your guests at 1. At that time, you will be allowed to enter the express lane. You can only have one return time reservation at a time. At Universal, you can also purchase an Express Pass if you do not qualify or want to get an AAP. There are a couple of rides that do not allow Express Passes, but will allow you to utilize the AAP. So this does come in handy for those rides. For prosthesis users, you will definitely want to look ahead at each attraction and know what their policies are for prosthetics. At Animal Kingdom, I did not find any rides that were limiting to amputees. Since Universal has many more roller coaster type attractions, you will definitely want to look at their app or the disability information guide from Guest Relations. At each ride in Universal, I found that it is best to go up to the team member and ask if they have any prosthesis restrictions before entering the line. They always seem to ask me, are you above the knee or below the knee? If above the knee, they would have to ask for their lead to come down to ask more questions to approve or deny your ability to ride the ride. Fortunately, the day that I was at the park, I had a waist belt on that I could show that my prosthesis was secure and would not come off. Many of the roller coasters at both parks have sample ride seating at the entrance to the ride. It's a good idea to try them out and make sure that you and your prosthesis can fit in the ride seating. I found that both parks guest relations teams and attractions team members were all very polite, considerate, and accommodating, allowing me to have an amazing day with my friends and family. At Universal, some of the leads even went out of their way and brought me and my guests straight to the entrance of the rides via the exits. 